Hey, welcome to Biblical or to Breaking News and Biblical Views. I'm Doug Hamp. We are looking at the question of gene altered Enviropig. This is put out by National Geographic a couple years ago. You may not have heard about it. The gene altered Enviropig to reduce dead zones. Pigs modified to excrete less phosphorus when limited approval in Canada. Oh my goodness, what are they up to now? Well, they've come out with a new kind of pig. It's genetically altered and viral pigs can pass on greener genes to their offspring. Move over, bacon. Here comes something greener. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the Bible actually says that the pig, among other animals, is considered unclean. Why? Because though it does has a cloven hoof, but it doesn't chew its cud. You see, animals that chew their cud, like the cow and the goat, for example, they have four stomachs, and they actually regurgitate their food after it's gone down to their first stomach. They regurgitate it later. They chew it again, goes down into the second stomach, and continues to be highly digested. Whereas pigs have just one stomach. They eat all kinds of toxins. They're actually designed to be you might call them garbage collectors of the world. They're really good at it. They're they're great, but they shouldn't be on your lunch. That's essentially what the Bible's telling us, among other animals like dogs and rats and other things that most of us will be like, yeah, I don't want to eat that stuff anyway. So here is a new kind of bacon. Here's something greener. A genetically engineered pig recently approved for limited production in Canada makes urine and feces that contain up to 65% less phosphorus, officials have announced. That could be good news for lakes, rivers, and ocean deltas where phosphorus from animal waste can play a role in causing algal blooms. These outbursts of algae rapidly deplete the water's oxygen, creating vast dead zones for fish and other aquatic life. Dubbing Enviropig the genetically altered animal cleared a major hurdle last month when the government-run Enviro. Environment Canada approved the animal for production in controlled research settings. The new biotech pig could take years to pass in U.S. and Canadian tests for commercial use and human consumption, noted Stephen Liss, an environmental scientist at the University of Guelph in Ontario and a spokesperson for the project. But the Enviropigs and creators are hopeful the animal will eventually pass muster. They will be probably the most significant transgenic food to be approved. We're in new territory. The problem with pig poop, like all living things, pigs need phosphorus from their food because the element plays a key role in the formation of bones, teeth, and cell walls, as well as a variety of cellular and organ functions. Swine in the United States primarily eat corn, while those in Canada munch on cereal grains, including barley, but the kind of phosphorus that occurs naturally in the, those plants is an indigestible without an enzyme called phytase, which pigs lack. Most farmers feed their pigs this enzyme as a supplement, but ingested phytase isn't as effective at breaking down phosphorus as phytase created inside the pig would be, so a fair amount of the element gets flushed out in pig waste. That waste, in turn, can make its way into the water supply. Now, wait a second. Why try to fix the pig to improve it so that it's going to make you know better ham when God said you shouldn't eat ham anyway? Bacon, pig bacon, pork, swine, hog is not on the menu. Check it out. Leviticus chapter 11. God makes it really clear. There are some animals that are fit for human consumption. Those are called clean. And others are not. And God calls those an abomination. The word there is sheketz. In Hebrew, it essentially means something that is contaminated. It's contagious. You know, think about it. If you were to go and touch a dead carcass, say somebody dies, what would you do? I know what I would do. I'd go and wash my hands because I know there's things called germs. They're floating around the air. Or sometimes when I touch something, then I can become contaminated or that thing is contagious. What do you do when somebody has a cold or the flu at work? Do you go and give them a big hug? Do you want to shake their hand? No, you want to keep your hands away. Why? Because you know that there's something about them. They have germs, right? And now they're going to pass eventually. But if you touch them, you increase the likelihood of you getting sick as well. Well, that's essentially what God is telling us 
to stay away from. Watch out for these animals. They're, they're, they're animals who are designed for, with a specific purpose. The pigs are great at cleaning up stuff. They will chomp on everything and they'll clean it up and they can eat all kinds of toxins. They can eat rattlesnakes and they don't die from the poison because their bodies can handle the toxins. They're created for that. But they were never created for us to make them a part of our lunch. That is something that God said not to do. You know, again, most of us would say, rat, should we eat rat? No, yucky, disgusting. Of course, we're not going to do that. We're not trying to find ways to improve the rat because most of us here in the West at least consider that to be kind of disgusting. Uh, but so does God. He said, no, you're not supposed to eat these things. Here are the animals that you can eat when they have a cloven hoof and they chew their cud. Let's take the rabbit, for example. Now, the rabbit appears to chew its cud. Chewing its cud is kind of like chewing gum, right? That same mastication process where it looks like they're chewing gum is the same thing that you have uh, rabbits and, and cows doing. But there's a, there's a vast difference between what cows do and what rabbits do. You see, with a cow, they actually are able to bring that lunch back up through their esophagus. They then chew on it again, which further breaks it down. It then goes into their second stomach, third and fourth, and eventually, of course, it goes out. But what, what a rabbit does is it only has one stomach, and so it eats the grass or whatever it's eating. It chews it up, goes into the stomach. It's then flushed out the rear end, all right, so it comes out as feces. And then what do the rabbits do? They go and they eat their feces. And so when they're chewing their cud, for a rabbit, it's not chewing the cud. It's quite different. They're actually going and eating their feces. Now, it's good for the rabbit but it's not good for us. That's really the bottom line. And that is why God said, don't eat those animals. God in his wisdom knew what he was doing. Really, if you look at the Bible from a scientific point of view, you discover that it's far advanced for any ancient book. It's really ahead of the times. And if we would only believe it and follow it, we'd enjoy great prosperity. Well, let's continue here. So the EnviroPig would eliminate the need for added phytase because the animal has been engineered to make its own. Researchers spent more than a decade hunting for an enzyme in nature responsible for breaking down phosphorus, finally finding it in the genome of the bacterium E. coli. Right, now, wait a second. I'm going to put E. coli in the pig. That doesn't sound so good. To make sure the modification would work in mammals, the team paired the E. coli genes with a mouse DNA promoter, a section of DNA that encourages replication of a specific segment. In this case, the bacterial genes, researchers then injected microscopic fertilized pig embryos with the mixture. Early trials revealed that the bacterial enzyme was not only incorporated into the pig genome, it could be inherited by the genetically pig's offspring. We are now in the eighth generation of pigs, and it has been transmitted to all of those generations, said Cecil Forsberg, a University of Gulf microbiologist and lead researcher on the project. And from our testing, there is no change in the structure of the gene throughout those generations. With these added genes, EnviroPig is able to absorb more phosphorus from its feed, so less of the element ends up in unused and excreted. So wait a second. They're adding this into mouse DNA? Now, doesn't the Bible actually say something about God? He's going to come back and he's going to destroy those who are actually eating the swine, the mouse, and the abomination. Oh, yeah, it does. It's in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 17. Check it out for yourself. He says that when he comes back, when Jesus comes back at the second coming, he's going to destroy those people. Now, you can ignore that verse, but it's really in there. And I recommend not ignoring it because I don't think that's ever a good idea. So there's something there that God is warning us about that it almost sounds like the EnviroPig is actually doing that very thing. Well, again, pork shouldn't be on the menu, but it is for many people. For many people who follow the Bible, they think that pork is okay. It's not. That's the reality. So we've got to change the way we think about this. When the Bible specifically addresses these very issues of something like a a viral pig, the Bible says, no, stay away from it. Don't eat the swine, the mouse, and the abomination. And it specifically says, those who eat those, God is going to destroy. Well, viral pig addresses not only environmental concerns, but also societal changes in pig farming, the University of Gulf researchers say. In addition to cutting feed supplement, supplement costs, viral pig could help farmers comply with zero discharge rules in the United States 
that allow no nitrogen or phosphorus runoff from animal operations. Right now, most pork producers meet this law by collecting pig waste in pits and lagoons until it can be treated or recycled as fertilizer, resulting in added expenses for the farmers. Yeah, that's actually incredibly disgusting. Uh, it's making people sick uh, near these pig farms. Again, we shouldn't be doing this. The cost to produce animals is increasing, putting the burden on farmers and a global marketplace, project spokesperson List said. Now that EnviroPig hasn't reached a milestone, pork producers will be watching to see if the transgenic animal passes safety tests with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, noted Paul Sundberg, vice president of science and technology for the U.S. National Pork Board. Industry professionals will also want to see a cost-benefit analysis to be sure EnviroPig will be a boon to the industry, Sundberg says. Pork producers are in favor of a technology that increases their competitiveness, he said. So far, no transgenic animal has been approved for consumption in the United States, but in 2008, the FDA approved, announced approval of the first human health product made from a genetically engineered animal. The goat-derived uh, anticoagulant uh, ATRIN is used for the prevention of blood clots in patients with a rare disease causing protein deficiency. It's a bad idea. First of all, pork is a bad idea. And then adding something to it to try to make it more palatable, well, that's a bad idea too. And again, when God specifically tells us, here's the verse in Isaiah 66, verse 17. Let me show this to you so you can have really a good perspective of what is actually going on here. So here's our text. I'll just make that a little bit bigger for you so we can all take a look at that. But it's right there in verse 17. It says, Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together. You know, that kind of sounds like what we were just reading about, the EnviroPig. Not a good idea. My recommendation is stay away from the EnviroPig, but more than that, stay away from the pig at all because God said it's not an animal that we should be eating. Well, until next time, thanks for joining me. God bless.